My brother Tim and I heard about something going on in Indiana, in Goshen, Indiana. And we heard it was revival. We hear that all the time. Um, and Tim and myself have interesting jobs. There was one week in North Carolina, I visited over 75 churches. So I get to see all sorts of denominations, all sorts of flavors of the body of Christ, and seen a lot of different things. And when we drove out about two and a half hours to Goshen, Indiana, we saw something that was unlike anything we'd ever seen. I mean, this is, this is 19 countries and who knows how many churches. Never seen what we saw in Goshen, Indiana. I truly believe that's revival. It was a conference that was supposed to be about a week or so, lasted 52 consecutive days, most of those days having morning, noon, and night services or evangelism, prayer, Bible study, things like that. Uh, many stories, too many stories to talk about. I remember one of the stories was when it first started, they had food for 600 people. They fed 1,300 people. I talked to a kid. I said, hey, because it's during the school, it's during a school day. I said, hey, man, is this common? He's like, yeah, this is common. Apparently, two different schools uh, would let out early some days or even close some days or same thing with businesses so people could go and be in the house of the Lord. Wow. We showed up on a random Wednesday. And there was no parking in, in the church parking lot or anything around the church parking lot. There wasn't a formal worship, wasn't a formal um, service, wasn't a formal Bible study. Just people wanted to be in the house of the Lord. And a lot of kids, too. So, hallelujah. So, something is going on in Goshen, Indiana. And Tim and myself were just so touched. We just said... Listen, the evangelist Frank Harbonke is an evangelist who preaches on the basic, simple salvation gospel. So all the churches should be able to get behind the evangelist. Assuming their schedules permit, we feel like every church should be able to get involved with an evangelist. So this is a neutral vehicle that can be used. So we say, God, use us as a bridge to bring whatever's in Goshen, Indiana, to the Chicagoland area. We said, hey, will you please come? to the Chicagoland area and talk to the pastors and leaders and the people and in Chicagoland just about what's going on there. We're not going to have an agenda, we're going to have worship by Damon Stewart and then we're just going to let God lead. I was saying, listen, the preaching, it was good, you know, the worship, it was good, you know, everything was good, but I didn't see anything different except that the presence was there. And that's not insulting to them anywhere. I mean, it was good, I got fed, but I was like, man, I've been fed a lot of other places, but the presence is just there. And one of the reasons why the presence is there and these pastors will talk to you about it, is because of evangelism. Who's better to talk about Jesus than someone who just got saved, just got free? That's right, yeah. You know, especially when the kids just get saved. This is multiplication. Guys, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about Helen bringing a friend, you know, one day every month. This is talking about Helen's friend, and then Helen's friend's friend, and then Pastor Jim's friend, and then Anthony's friend, and Nino's friend, and everyone's friend. Is this multiplication. This is how big God thinks. God thinks in multiplication. God's not thinking about adding a couple people. God's thinking about multiplying the kingdom. Amen. And that's really what's going on over there. It's just people who have a fire for evangelism. Started with an Amish and a Mennonite and then moved and infiltrated, went into the Baptist and Methodist and all over. And then you, you know, you've got the Charismatics and the Pentecostals and all this just together just saying, you know, we don't agree on everything, but we agree on seeing people saved That's right. and seeing that unity Amen. it was 7 a.m. and there was 3,500 to 4,000 people evangelizing at 7 a.m. Wow. I've never seen that before when God does that in Chicagoland are you serious that town I, I don't know the statistics but I think it's somewhere around 12,000 and one of the nights there was five different larger churches had 10,000 people in them collectively now there are people who traveled, I mean, Minnesota, Mississippi, Texas, all over, but I mean, that's incredible. So something is happening there. And I believe that we should step up and say, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a bridge from heaven to earth. I want to be a gateway from right now to revival. On the count of three, I am revival. So one, two, three. I am revival. One, two, three. I am revival. We've got to get that in our heart that it really just starts with the ordinary people. There's a lot of emphasis on the pastors, and the pastors can do what they can do, but if the people don't have it in their hearts, it'll most likely fall flat.
I just want to encourage you guys. There's so much there. There's so many, so many words I've heard. So many things that have been spoken so long before we even got into this area about this particular time. There was a verse, Psalm 72. In Psalm 72, it says at some point, it says, it says God only does wonderful things, wondrous things, exuberant things. When God is moving, if you can describe what God is doing, there's a good chance that may not have been exactly what God had wanted to do to its fullest. I want God to do a wondrous thing, something I can't describe, something I can't explain. I don't want to be able to explain it. Like this Goshen, Indiana thing, this is difficult for me to describe. I want even greater. I want people to look at me and say, no way. What? Or, okay, come on, like, did that really happen? That's what I want. That's what I want to hear. I, I want to see God do some things so far out of the box. Now I'm going to press and I'm going to pray and I'm going to pursue my prayer requests in my heart and about certain areas and certain people, of course. But then I'm going to say, God, I want you to lead my prayers into something bigger. And then bigger than that bigger thing. Because God is so big. And God has spoken a lot of promises. God has spoken a lot of things. And it says that God's word is not going to return to the throne room until it's fulfilled. His word will not return void. So if you speak something, it's going to happen. Isn't that cool? It's like there's a veil. And it's like there's a veil here, and we can't even describe it, but heaven's like right behind here. We just got to grab it. Something, sometimes it's a promise, sometimes it's peace, patience, kindness. We have access to all, all that stuff. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? So the kingdom of heaven is at hand then it's right there. So we just need to grab it, right? It's like my Bible's at hand, so I just need to grab it. It's like, you're, you know, it's, we have to grab it, we have to pursue this thing. We have to say, listen, I want to be the revival, as Nino said, and as we just said, is we really got to say, listen, revival's at hand. A revival's at hand, and God has already said that He wants to use people. Hebrews 11 wasn't about angels. Hebrews 11 was about people who were obedient. When you look at in, in some of the uh, prophecies about Jesus, it wasn't that he looked slenderous or, or this or that or whatnot, but it said he was really obedient. The heart of the Father. He said, I don't do anything unless I see my papa do it. If I see my dad do it, I do it. If I don't, I don't. I don't want to hear my, my dad. I want to hear him when he talks to me. I want to be part of that remnant. I want to be part of the 300. Dad, I want you to pick me. God, I want to be part of this thing. I want to be close to your heart. I want you to tell me which promises I can pick up. I want you to tell me which mantles I can pick up.